Hello, everyone. Okay, today in the virtual instructor-led training um, for SAXT deployment, we're going to attempt to assist in identifying the high-level sort of key considerations towards making your System Architect XT deployment successful. Specifically, we will review the environments and the considerations for deploying System Architect XT to support System Architect XT. So in a, throughout this sort of course, um, you'll see that we'll refer to as System Architect XT as just SAXT. So the primary target audience is aimed at administrators who are normally responsible for installing and deploying or defining the employment environment for System Architect XT service for the System Architect XT clients or the Process Integrator clients. It's also for System Architect administrators who could be responsible for creating and configuring the required System Architect encyclopedias within these environments. The secondary target audience is intended for any enterprise architects, enterprise engineers, um, business modelers who use the tool. So it will assist them in understanding how it's deployed, how the clients connect to the um, services, and how they connect to the databases. So this will help them assist understanding their usage and if they have any queries or who they should contact if they have any issues. So what are the sort of basic prerequisites? Well, although it's not necessary, it's recommended if you have a sort of basic understanding or knowledge of um, client-server deployment environments. A System Architect XT is a true client-server um, application. This helps with understanding the environments we're going to discuss. It also helps if you have an understanding of Microsoft IIS or web services, which are system, system requirements for the XT application, Windows Active Directory, how users or groups are assigned, this is a general sort of domain administration understanding. Um, if you have an understanding of SQL, Oracle servers, or how you access them in a multi-user client server environment with the TCP/IP ports and services, and also if you have the general understanding of system architect deployment configurations. For this session, we're going to assume that in the environment we discussed, there's already an existing system architect deployment and there's already an existing um, database server hosting encyclopedias. We'll also assume that any Windows system components required um, that we discuss for System Architect XT will already be installed and working correctly to the default Microsoft configuration. So what are the goals and objectives? The goals and objectives are to provide a high-level understanding of the architecture required for System Architect XT deployment and identifying the key considerations towards making the deployment successful. After completing the session, we want you to be able to understand the benefits of System Architect XT, what types of clients are supported and their common usage, have an understanding of the deployment environments, the networks, the hardware, the servers, any installation considerations, component configurations that will be required in the deployment. We'll also review how Authorization and authentication is done within the System Architect XT environment to provide access for clients to the required encyclopedias. So how you add users and you set up their access rights. So what do we have as a general outline? Well, we're going to look, review and see what is System Architect, what's its product suite. So we're going to look at what is System Architect XT. We'll go into that in more detail, look at its components, look at its system components, authentication, requirements for installation. So we'll first review System Architect in the product suite and its interfaces. So what is System Architect? Um, it is an environment which enables you to build business and enterprise architectures. It allows you to capture, analyze, plan, and build these environments. It provides a fully integrated collection of models and documents across five common domains for strategy, business, information, systems, and technology. Its main users will commonly be enterprise architects and business modelers. So we'll review what are the main components of the System Architect product suite. So some of its components are System Architect itself is the main component. And then we have System Architect XT. And we also have the System Architect XT process integrator, the System Architect doors integration, System Architect ERP. So for our discussions, we'll concentrate on System Architect XT. So System Architect XT provides the back-end service for System Architect 
If you want to know more about other, the other product suites and that, you can go to the account manager or you can go to the support site. So now we'll sort of look at further what is System Architect XT, what deployment configurations are recommended, and what client interfaces are supported. So System Architect XT. System Architect XT is an enterprise architecture and business process analysis solution. So it provides real-time, role-based data access and decision support to extended enterprise users and teams. So basically what this means is System Architect XT provides the environment to support a wider audience of clients than the base System Architect XT clients. It opens it up to an extended team of users provided by the SAXT client interfaces. So hence, the XT in the product reflects the fact that it opens it up the access of System Architect encyclopedias to an extended team, to those people beyond the base System Architect users. So System Architect XT is an associated application service to System Architect. This means System Architect XT provides a bridge allowing System Architect XT clients to access the same shared encyclopedia as System Architect clients. So because it's an associated product and it needs to bridge to these System Architect encyclopedias, it's dependent on System Architect. So it's dependent on System Architect to serve up encyclopedias to enable them to be created and open. So this means that System Architect itself must be already deployed in a System Architect XT deployment environment. So just for the case of discussion as we go through this, it's important to remember that System Architect XT we will discuss as the sort of base application and service that supports client interfaces. So when we refer to System Architect XT clients, we'll always ensure we mention sort of clients as that. So we've covered a little bit about the System Architect product suite and that System Architect XT is part of this and it provides um, specific client interfaces. So in this diagram, we're going to try to look at um, and understand the various client interfaces that are in a sort of XT deployment. So as in, seen in the diagram, there are typically three common client interfaces supported in the deployment environment. And these interfaces provide access to a shared System Architect Encyclopedia. So we'll also sort of see that throughout sort of System Architect, encyclopedias can also be referred to as models, repositories, or databases. But basically, it's all a database that resides on a SQL or an Oracle server. So starting from the top right, we can see the System Architect client interface. So these clients are commonly co-located enterprise architect teams, which need a solution to support their complex modeling, simulation, and execution. So in the middle, we can see the System Architect XT client interface. So these are the extended teams that require architecture analysis, custom reporting, and sort of light modification in real time. So this is provided um, by a browser sort of web interface. On the left, we can see the System Architect Process Integrator client. So these are commonly um, the Visio clients, the business modelers. So this is provided by a process, separate process integrator um, installation on the client as it's a Visio add-on, as well as the System Architect XT service. So as you can see, all the common interfaces um, sort of provide different layers of modeling, simplicity to more complex, and they all access a sort of a system architect repository. So what are the various system architect deployment configurations? Well, as mentioned, system architect is dependent on system architect, system architect XT is dependent on system architect to create and serve up its encyclopedias. Thus, any XT deployment requires an existing installation of system architect. As it provides the access to the encyclopedia, it also requires a SQL or Oracle data server. Although System Architect is dependent on an existing System Architect installation, due to possible DLL conflicts, it's not possible to install System Architect XT onto the same machine as an existing System Architect installation. So it's very important to remember, System Architect XT must be installed onto a separate machine to that of any System Architect installation. 
So this is something that we'll kind of repeat throughout as we go because it can be confusing. But the two can't be um, installed on the same machine. So in this diagram, um, we try to depict an example of a common system architect XT LAN deployment. So as we can see in this diagram, there is a separate system architect XT server. This can also be a licensed server or a web server or an application server. Um, this SAXT server connects to a SQL or an Oracle data server. And this hosts the shared encyclopedia. So as we saw in the previous diagram depicting the client interfaces, the SQL or the Oracle server provides that shared um, enterprise encyclopedia repository. So the SAXT server provides the access for the SAXT clients to the shared server. So the clients for XT get their access via the XT server to the shared encyclopedia. We also can see that System Architect is already installed in the deployment environment on a separate machine. In this example, we depict it installed on a standalone client machine on the network. So by standalone, we mean System Architect is fully installed on that client, but they're still connecting to the same shared database server. So this could be um, that the system architect is installed on one client in the environment, or it can be installed on multiple clients in that environment. So it, it doesn't matter to the number. It's just that um, it's deployed separately on the, off the XT server. So in this multi-user type LAN configuration, it's very important to consider the network environment for the deployment. The data transfer rate of the network is a very important for system architect product suite. It is across the network that information is transferred from each system architect client to the encyclopedia on the shared data server. This includes all basic telelogic system architect functions, such as adding and editing information to the encyclopedia, running reports against the data, and sort of you know, defining any customizations or generating sort of XML, any type of sort of functions like features of the tool. Thus, for best performance, it's always recommended that you have at least 100 megabits, but ideally one gigabit network connection between all system architect servers and their clients. So specifically between the servers, it's recommended that you have good data access, and it's also recommended that they're co-located. The actual data transfer throughput rates should be greater than 60 megabits for upstream and downstream with a latency commonly less than 100 milliseconds. So Telelogic System Architect can be used in networks with less, but there will be degradation in performance. And sort of all of these sort of more specific network configurations and latency and bandwidth are detailed more in depth in the System Architect installation guide, which we'll be referring to throughout sort of the discussion. And you can download the System Architect installation guide as part of the manuals in the support downloads area.